Okay. I'm gonna strive to make this a 10 minute video. Um, I have a lot to say, so I might be going fast. Uh, anyways, um, so I bought this in April or sometime around there. Uh, this is an AK 63DS or an AMD 63. Um, it is from Clearview Investments. Um, I bought this because I needed I needed something. Um, I, um, I didn't want to buy a washer. Washer is too expensive nowadays. And please don't tell me that I can find a washer for just as cheap as this. Uh, I can't. Um, they're definitely not online. Um, I didn't. I didn't really look. I didn't look as hard as I did online. Um, when I was looking locally um, but this was easier to buy um, there's nothing wrong with this gun uh, a lot of people don't like it because they consider it a Frankenstein gun and it doesn't have a chrome line barrel I don't give a shit um, so I've, I've owned this maybe a little bit under a year and I fired a total of 36 rounds out of it um, and that the first time me doing that was last night so um, I'm not going to be shooting the barrel out of this thing anytime soon. And if I do, um, I'll, I'll spike people and just put in a new barrel in this gun. Just buy a separate barrel that, that I don't know, it's chrome line. And uh, when it's time to replace, I just buy it, take it to a gunsmith, have them replace it. Um, the, the answer for me is not just to go out and buy a washer, uh, because washers have their own issues. Um, you know, you see a lot of people saying that uh, when they're yeah, and the gun is clear, by the way. It's clear. There's no mag. Uh, let's pull the trigger. There's nothing over there beyond the drywall. There's no rooms. We're all in the basement. So there's nothing over there with, uh, that that could could have been killed. Uh, I'm surrounded by dirt with everything except, you know, there's no dirt on the top of me. But anyways, um, so people don't like the fact that the barrel is, uh, is a chrome line. I don't care. Uh, people don't like the, the muzzle brake. They say it's non-standard. Um, this is non-standard. Um, they don't like that either. Um, I'm growing to not like this because this is, a uh, shorter than what it needs to be um, which means that when it's time for me to buy um, uh, I don't want to always have plastic I, I want you know maybe I want wood furniture uh, but because of this um, I can't I can't use uh, furniture from other AKMs I can't it won't fit at least the top here uh, so I, I replaced this. This is my mag pool. I bought that. That was one of the first things I did because before then, it, this was in place. So it's got a, you know, had a foregrip, but there's no shielding here. Um, which told me that when firing a gun, you know, a lot of rounds, um, there's probably a chance that my hands are going to get hot. Um, and even with shielding, so I took this and I fired 36 rounds from it. I was firing uh, three rounds at a time, trying to get a good, uh, uh, I guess, grouping and, and making adjustments with the, for, you know, on the sights from there. Um, but even with those groupings, there was a little bit of heat. Not enough for me to kind of not touch the barrel, but I felt heat up in here. Um, so if I, if, I, if I have a problem with heat, even with this shield, uh, this shielded uh, grip, um, I could always get a foregrip attached here because this is just mag pole, right? Um, the barrel is non-standard link, which is why they added this. They added this to extend the barrel to meet compliance. Uh, otherwise, you would have to register it as a short-barreled rifle, uh, which you know, tax stamp. Um, so th that can be a headache. Um, so um, uh, 
I don't know why they didn't put a standard uh, uh, length uh, barrel in. Uh, maybe they were doing it on the cheap. I don't know, but I'm but I'm fine with it. Um, so the compliance parts, uh, the U.S. parts, and you guys that are that know of AK-47s, you're you're already aware of this. Um, but anyways, let's put that there. The U.S. equipment, the U.S. parts aren't the stock. Um, the magazines that it came with is four tap codes. Uh, the trigger group, which is a tap code trigger group, um, and the barrel. So, um, the tap code mags, I have no problem with. I know some people disdain them. They want steel or they want something be, because they think that uh, they're subpar and they move around a lot. Well, uh, not in this gun. Well, uh, they don't move around at all. Uh, they didn't have uh, that. They didn't cause me any issues. Uh, with feeding or anything like that, uh, they don't fall out, nothing. Uh, they're good. Um, the trigger group is actually really nice. It's got a great feel. Um, so there is a tad bit of slack from you know hitting the wall, and then it just drops. The hammer just drops. Um, when it, the reset is great as well. Uh, so I I don't have any problems with the tapco trigger and. Tapco is usually pretty good. Uh, now the thing, I I did see some wear in 36 rounds. Um, it didn't just wear like that. Um, there was wear <clears throat> between when I first bought it and last night before I took it to the range because I had been dry firing it. Uh, so when you dry fire it, of course, whether or not there's a round in the chamber, that hammer when you pull the trigger is going to hit that uh, uh, bolt carrier group tang. And uh, the reason it's mushrooming isn't because of, of the parts kit. It came from FEG. This is a Hungary, Hungarian gun. It comes from the FEG factory. Um, uh, so it came as a parts kit to Clearview Investments. And Clearview Invest, Investments built the gun with the U.S. parts to meet compliance. So... <clears throat> one of those parts was the, is the trigger group um, so the trigger group that's not really in, integral to to a to a native uh, built AK-47 uh, beating up on that tang that's not a problem with the gun that's a problem with our compliance uh, in the fact that we use a TAPCO which is probably using a harder metal than the tank so it's beating up on the tank now the thing with the tangs is that they tend to uh, get beat up a little bit, just mushroomed, and then the beating stops. It wears in just as with any uh, machinery, right? Whether it's an in the engine internals or whatever. So there's always a break-in period. Um, I would expect that the mushrooming would, will eventually stop. Um, for some people, um, it does cause issues such as uh, the bolt gets stuck back because the mushrooming gets stuck in the back of, uh, I guess, the receiver area, uh, the trunnion area. So, um, the quick fix for that is to take a Dremel and get rid of the mushrooming. And, and again, once it's there, it usually stops after a certain point. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not even going to Dremel it. Um, if there's a problem, if a problem develops, then I'll I'll dremel it off, and uh, just enough material to kind of stop it from catching. Because that, I I I don't think it's going to happen, but I've read that other people have experienced that issue, so uh, it's something that's on my radar just to kind of be aware of. So uh, um, I zeroed the weapon. Uh, so uh, it's been an hour with it. I fired 36 rounds because that's what it took to get me to to get the sights zero. Um, I used a 25 yard range. It was indoor. Um, I used um, Red Army Standard 124 grain FMJ uh, steel cased lead core ammo, uh, boat tailed. Um, 
so I have a box of 500 of that plus I've got a big stack here of different types of ammo I have five boxes of PPU three of them are round nose two of them are no wait a minute no three of them are uh, regular nose two boxes are soft point round nose which I heard causes issues in AK-47 sometimes but I uh, when I bought the ammo, I, did, I wasn't paying attention to that. I should have opened the box and looked at it before I bought it. Uh, so once I bought it, couldn't take it back. So I have 40 rounds of that. And then I have a box of what appears to be 50 uh, Red Army Standard 123 grain full metal jacket. So um, had no problems with it. I did have a... Uh, <clears throat> some issues citing it because I didn't you know this is a fresh platform for me I'm very familiar with the AR-15 slash M16 platform um, uh, the manual of arms um, I am not familiar with this and how to cite it well I'm familiar with how to cite it now because I spent a good hour kind of trying to get it to do what I needed it to do um, if I had good instructions it probably would have taken me 20 minutes to a half an hour but uh, I finally got it sorted out um, great gun lovely trigger um, it's a battle gun so I'm not expecting it to outshoot uh, an M16 or, or AR-15 at I don't know at, at 300 meters I'm not expecting um, things I'm, I'm looking to replace and we're at the 11 minute mark I'm gonna wind down soon um, eventually the stock I want something that's nice um, I don't know what yet um, so that eventually that eventually will be replaced I'm probably gonna get a foregrip that mounts on it here that folds so I don't you know I won't need it if I I won't use it if I don't need it or if I don't want it um, and a uh, sight mounting hardware so the plate and then the mount itself um, would eventually but I would have to look at customizing this part either myself or having someone do it for me um, comes with a strap comes with four uh, Tapco mags like I mentioned um, Eventually, I want bait lights, but they're getting hard to find, and they're, some of them are expensive. Uh, I wouldn't mind a couple of them, maybe three or four. I say a couple, I mean several. Um, and maybe some steel mags. But other than that, that is it. Um, this is my Gateway AR. Um, I might be looking at getting an MPAP or... Um, Century Arms has a, they, they import a collapsible stock gun, um, I think it's called similar, AK-63, uh, but it is non, it's not Frankensteined out. Uh, I was looking at those as well, and those actually have a pretty good reputation. Um, not like their C-39s or their Ross, their Rosses, not like that at all. Even this gun is not like that. Um, this is several steps above those two guns. Um, but anyways, I think we're done with the 13 minute 50 mark. And bye-bye.